Family Matters was one of the longest-running and most popular sitcoms in TV history. It was a spin-off of the popular sitcom Perfect Strangers, based on two side characters from its third and fourth seasons, the quick-witted elevator operator Harriet Winslow and her policeman husband, Carl. Family Matters ran for nine seasons with many changes throughout its near-decade-long run, the most significant being the introduction and breakout success of the lovable nerd Steve Urkel who is often labeled as the savior of the series and its destroyer. I agree that Urkel's perplexing amount of alter egos and inventions got out of hand as the series went on, but I also think there were other factors that led to Family Matters decline as well. So here's my take on how and when Family Matters died. Family Matters debuted on ABC on September 22, 1989, and season one introduced us to the Winslow household, who was Carl and Harriet, their three kids Eddie, Lara, and Judy, Carl's mother Estelle, and Harriet's younger sister Rachel, with her infant son Richie. One of the primary intentions the creators had in making Family Matters was to contrast the Cosby Show's white-collar, picture-perfect family by focusing on an imperfect blue-collar family. So with that intention in mind, the first half of season one focused on situations around the Winslow's home life to get us familiar with their imperfect family dynamic, such as the readjustment and authority struggle when Estelle moved in, the siblings' rivalry based on their grades at school, or Laura accidentally selling a quilt that carries the Winslow's 200-year-old family history. A few of these early episodes also focused on the adults' work life and how they affected the dynamic at home too, such as Harriet's search for a new job to help keep the family finances afloat, Rachel's tenuous attempts at being a freelance writer that usually caused tension in the home, and how Carl's duties on the force sometimes created trust issues with Harriet. Up to this point, Family Matters was entertaining because of the Winslow's quick-witted banter and their lifelike family chemistry. But behind the scenes, the show's performance was considered to be mediocre, putting Family Matters in danger of getting cancelled. But the trajectory of the show was changed forever in the 12th episode Lara's first date, when Steve Urkel made his debut appearance. As the story goes, Carl asks Steve to take Lara, his longtime crush, to a dance after Carl finds out Lara was worried nobody might ask her and Urkel's klutzy nature and lack of social skills becomes an obvious sign to Carl that he needs to backpedal on his plan. Hardly anyone would argue that Urkel's physical comedy and oddball humor took the show to another level in this episode, but Urkel was only intended to be a one-off character, and audiences instantly clamored to see more of the Winslow's lovesick nerdy neighbor. So the remaining episodes had to be quickly rewritten so that Jaleel White's breakout character could return for the rest of the season as a guest. The creators even refilmed four of the cold opens from previous episodes so that Urkel would feel like part of the show from the beginning when reruns would air in syndication. With Urkel's wind in its sails, Family Matters survived an early cancellation, and in season two, the Winslow's world was greatly expanded beyond the walls of their home. Rachel started a restaurant called Rachel's Place that became the new teen hangout, and it was the workplace for her, Lara, and Urkel so storylines frequently took place there, making it feel like a second home for the show. Carl's work life was expanded upon by featuring more storylines where he's on duty, and was now accompanied by his commanding officer, Lieutenant Murtaugh, a caricature of an overzealous yet dim-witted cop who eventually becomes hopelessly infatuated with Rachel. Eddie, Lara, and Urkel's world also expanded by featuring a lot more episodes about their life at school, populated with new recurring classmates and friends, like Lara's best friend Maxine, and the charming village idiot Waldo, who would become Eddie's best friend in Season 3. Season 2 is also when Jaleel White officially became part of the main cast by joining his co-stars in the opening credits, and is a time when Urkel's popularity reached new heights. For example, Jaleel White improved his character's most famous catchphrase that was introduced in Season 1 Did I do that? to sound more nasally in Season 2, Did I do that? giving it the definitive sound we still hear in our minds today. Season 2 is also when the classic Urkel dance debuted, and when we were introduced to the show's first alter-ego character, Urkel's cousin Myrtle, who is played flawlessly by Jaleel White as a female version of Urkel from the South, who falls desperately in love with Eddie. In addition to Urkel's increased presence and popularity on the show, he also received more emotional development in the episode Marriage 101 by showing that underneath Steve's annoying mannerisms, he is a person with feelings and can't be treated poorly without it affecting him. From then on, he was no longer just an annoying kid to be tolerated. He became a sympathetic character that audiences wanted to root for. 
Family Matters third and fourth seasons were enjoyable as the first two, but in hindsight, this is when some early signs of decay started to creep in that led to the show's decline. For example, in the season three episode Making the Team, it's revealed that Urkel has amazing basketball skills despite being the klutziest person on the face of the earth. It was an enjoyable episode on its own, and according to Wikipedia, it had the highest viewership of the season. But within the show's greater context, it established that Urkel could become whatever the show needed him to be in order to attract viewers, which would become a bigger problem later on. Along those lines, it's also important to note that Season 3 is when plots featured more science fiction elements through Urkel's inventions, like when he used a jetpack to win a rope climbing contest, or built an artificially intelligent Urkelbot that was featured in two episodes. Making Urkel a master inventor, capable of creating anything he puts his mind to, would also hurt the show in later seasons. Seasons 3 and 4 are also when Family Matters started to focus more on the teenage characters, which is a common evolutionary step for TV shows about families, but that combined with the omnipresence of Urkel meant that other characters like Rachel, Estelle, and Judy had less to do, since they didn't easily fit into a teenage-focused storyline. In Season 3, Estelle mostly appeared to say something funny when quickly coming and going from her tennis games, and in Season 4, it seemed the show was hinting that Estelle would be appearing a lot less going forward, when her courtship with Fletcher culminated in their marriage in the episode Mama's Wedding. Judy was very underutilized throughout the show, sometimes appearing to deliver just one line, or to simply appear to fill a scene, and after Mama's Wedding, Judy was never seen or heard from again. She was retconned out of the family like she never existed. Rachel's dwindling presence throughout Season 4, leading to her complete departure in Season 5, was because Telma Hopkins began work on another ABC sitcom, Getting By, which only lasted a couple seasons before getting cancelled. And it's here in the last five seasons when I think the show lost its way, mainly because the Winslow family had changed too much, there was an over-reliance on Urkel's inventions and alter egos, and some issues I found with Lara and Urkel's relationship drama. As I mentioned earlier, in Season 5, the Winslow household had changed quite a bit. Estelle wasn't around as much anymore because she got married and moved out, Judy was retconned out of the family, and Rachel was gone too, with the exception of a few appearances in Season 6 and one in Season 9, which was awkward because her son Richie was still appearing frequently on the show without her. Things changed even more for the Winslows in Season 7, when another little kid, 3J, was introduced when Urkel gets involved in the Big Brother program, and he's eventually adopted by the Winslows in Season 8. The last major change to the Winslows was an abrupt appearance of a new Harriet in the middle of the ninth and final season. Joe Marie Payton had wanted to do other projects for years, but agreed to stay on Family Matters to help keep the show going. But when her contract expired after Season 8, she was ready to walk away for good but was convinced to film half of Season 9's episodes to help the show transition to its new network on CBS. So by the end of Season 9, the Winslow family was very different than the group of people we had come to know in the beginning, and these changes all started with the disappearance of Rachel and Judy in Season 5. But as other characters' roles had diminished or disappeared altogether, one significant character that was added to the show in Season 4 was Myra Monkhouse, who develops a very unhealthy fixation on Steve Urkel and is determined to help him overcome his undying affection for Lara. And Michelle Thomas' performance was an entertaining blend of charm and psychotic creepiness that made Myra endearing yet unnerving. Creating a love triangle between Lara, Steve, and Myra at the end of Season 4 was an interesting premise, and it was made even more compelling when Lara started to show more genuine feelings for Steve. But instead of keeping it simple, I think the show went too far to complicate the tension in Season 5, in the episode Dr. Urkel and Mr. Cool, by introducing Steve Urkel's alter ego, Stefan Urkel. In the episode, Steve has reached a new level of desperation to win Lara's affections, by coming up with a scientific breakthrough in genetic engineering, by inventing an elixir of his cool genes, to drink it down and turn himself into his suave polar opposite, Stefan. Lara becomes infatuated with Urkel's alter ego, but her affections soon turn cold once she realizes Stefan is too self-centered and admits she'd rather have Steve back, which happens after the elixir wears off. In the season 5 finale Stefan returns, Urkel invents a transformation chamber that perfected Stefan to be more caring and likable, although the transformation is still only temporary. And when Steve sees how upset Lara is about losing this version of Stefan, he vows to figure out a way to make the transformation permanent. 
and this storyline is largely ignored until the season 7 finale Send in the Clone, when Urkel creates a cloning device, makes a clone of himself, and then turns one of them into Stefan, so Myra and Lara can each have the man of their dreams. But I think the whole relationship arc between Lara, Steve, Myra, and Stefan dragged on for way too long. In the last few seasons, Urkel was constantly announcing and renouncing his feelings for Myra. Lara, on the other hand, eventually realizes she has deeper feelings for Steve than she thought possible. And near the end of season 7, she kisses him passionately for being her perfect date. But then after that, she went right back to treating him like an annoyance until the middle of season 9, when she realizes again that she loves him, like it was the first time it had ever happened. She eventually admits her feelings for Steve, and then they both end their separate relationships and get engaged. It's a nice finish from where they started way back in Season 1, but the path getting there since Myra's introduction was very inconsistent and poorly paced. Dr. Urkel and Mr. Cool was one of the most viewed episodes of the season because of the spectacle of seeing Urkel, and Jaleel White for that matter, look and act more normal. But similar to making the team in Season 3, Stefan was another example of how Urkel became whatever he needed to be in order to keep audiences entertained. As I mentioned earlier, Urkel invents a transformation chamber that perfected Stefan to be more caring and likable. Aside from making Stefan, the transformation chamber was also used to give us several more Urkel alter egos, like Carl Urkel, Eddie Urkel, Einstein Urkel, Elvis Urkel, and Bruce Lee Urkel. And in addition to those characters, seasons 7 through 9 is also when Myrtle made a comeback as a recurring character, and an episode featuring Urkel's other cousin, Cornelius Eugene Urkel, better known as OGD, Original Gangsta Dog. And it's also at this point when the series went further down the rabbit hole of becoming a sci-fi sitcom, with Urkel being able to create any invention necessary to give the show something new to do. Besides using the transformation chamber as a genetic modifier, it was also used once to shrink and enlarge objects, and there were several other inventions featured on the show as well, such as a sleeping potion, a love potion, a speed-up potion, a popcorn popping recliner, an Isetta dragster, a teleportation device, a force field belt, a weight compressor, a time travel watch, phonetic exploding powder, and an artificial gravity field that Urkel used in outer space. Despite all the issues I have with the last five seasons, trying to pick a date when I think the show died was more difficult than I thought it would be. But after all my deliberations, I made my choice based on what Family Matters was initially supposed to be about, an imperfect blue-collar family trying to get through life. And when Urkel became a surprise breakout star, I think the creators still managed to maintain that vision alive for a while, before getting lost in the weeds somewhere in the middle. Which is why I think the episode Mama's Wedding that aired on March 5, 1993 is the day when Family Matters died, because it was the last time the Winslow family that you and I think of today was still intact, and before Family Matters became a sci-fi sitcom, where Urkel's inventions, alter egos, and confusing relationships were what mattered most. Click the video on the screen for more engaging content right here on Fun Fact Films.